All right. Buckle your seatbelt. This was going to be the bet. If I won, I get to come over to your house with my bag of goodies. Uh, inside my bag of goodies, there are several different bundles of shibari rope. Shibari is a Japanese art of rope bondage. My bet was going to involve showing up at your place and completely tying you up and incapacitating you and then being able to do whatever I wanted to every single hole in your body until I was done with you. Trouble for Golden Globe nominee Army Hammer, known for his roles in the social network and Call Me By Your Name. Disturbing and racy messages allegedly sent to women by the actor Army Hammer are trending on Twitter. <laughs> How did Army Hammer go from Hollywood Golden Boy to an alleged abuser? I thought we were all joking about that Army Hammer stuff, but that's real. I just found out that that's real. What? What? Like? That's what? What does Army Hammer eat for dinner? Okay. Now, in one message, he allegedly <laughs> described a time where he went hunting and ate a deer's heart, and then said to a woman, "Quote: I'd eat your heart if I wasn't stuck without you after." I mean, he said, "I'm a hundred percent a cannibal." I mean, I had bruises. I had. I hated it. He abused me mentally, emotionally, and sexually. He is a keeper. I've never doubted it for a minute. Please welcome Army Hammer. Army Hammer's life seemed perfect, a beautiful wife and kids, and a sparkling Hollywood career. But a glimpse into his family history reveals how shocking allegations over dark fantasies of cannibalism and bondage, and the ensuing fallout, are one more chapter in the Hammer's fraught legacy. Breaking news, stay at home. That is the order tonight from four state governors as the coronavirus pandemic spreads. Forcing millions of Americans into lockdown. Non-essential business ordered to close. As the world went on lockdown in the summer of 2020, Hammer had been quarantining at a luxury villa in the Cayman Islands with his father, Michael, his stepmother, Misty, his two young children, and his wife of a decade, Elizabeth. Army had been so desperate to escape the Caymans that he booked a flight back to the U.S. A source close to Elizabeth claimed that his decision to flee his family during a pandemic was the final straw in a marriage that had already been tested by infidelity. She filed for divorce in July. On Friday, the movie star shared the news in an Instagram post. Quote, it has been an incredible journey, but together we've decided to turn the page and move on from our marriage. By January 1st, Hammer seems to have rebounded romantically with a series of short-term girlfriends and was ready to face the world anew. He tweeted, 2021 is going to kneel down before me and kiss my feet, because this year I'm the boss. 2020 was a cheap shot no one was expecting. Now I know what we are up against, and it's time to go to war. But this didn't really go as planned. Several weeks later, uh, okay, Army so found himself in a darker crisis. Here. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's a, here's so a it's, bit of rope. It's also, okay. it's also a wicked good party trick. People get thrilled when you pull out rope at a party. Uh, Amid the turmoil of divorce proceedings, this, several women took to social media to accuse the actor of emotional abuse, manipulation, and violence. The scandal ballooned as screenshots circulated that seemed to show the actor describing very disturbing sexual fantasies. The first of the allegations came to light on January 12, 2021, when an anonymous woman, at House of Effie, comes forward on Instagram and claims to have had a four-year-long affair with Hammer. I met Army Hammer on Facebook in 2016, when I was 20 years old. The relationship progressed rapidly, and the emotions from both sides became really intense. He would often test my devotion to him, slowly removing and crossing my boundaries as he became increasingly more violent. <laughs> he abused me mentally, emotionally, and sexually. She published a collection of texts and screenshots she reportedly received from ARMY and also messages that reportedly came from his other exes. Hollywood is a very business-oriented industry. And now, after Me Too happened and Time's Up, Nobody is taking a chance on anybody. Just a day later, Army stepped away from two high-profile projects, a rom-com with Jennifer Lopez and a Paramount series about the making of The Godfather. Shortly after, his agency, WME, dropped him. As soon as allegations start to come out that seem to have substance, they're dropping you like a hot potato. WME immediately dropped Army Hammer. Army Hammer has been fighting for his career after being plagued by a social media scandal. 
Some people, however, were still standing behind the actor, despite the allegations. Along with other fans, former Disney Channel star Bella Thorne came to the actor's defense when the allegations surfaced online. She took to her Instagram stories and shared a post claiming the screenshots going around are fake. Another allegation surfaced, this time the app founder Courtney Vucekovic said she dated Hammer in 2020 from June to October and alleged that the actor subjected her to emotional abuse, sexually coerced her, and made her feel unsafe. Hand marks, like, that would stay on my body. Courtney explained that one encounter, which took place on an evening in a motel in Sedona, Arizona, left her with regret. Army, she said, was drinking heavily and persuaded her to participate in a bondage scenario that she was not comfortable with. The ropes were around your neck, your wrists, your ankles, behind your back. I didn't like it, and it's like, it didn't feel safe or like, I didn't feel like loved or, it was just horrible. And you're like completely immobilized. I'm just closing my eyes until it ended and then we just, he just went to sleep. As messy as it was, she said she felt like it was a real relationship. Army had introduced her to his mother, Drew, and talked about bringing her to the Dominican Republic while he filmed a romantic comedy with Jennifer Lopez. But, just as fast as the relationship formed, in June and intensified, the two were spending nearly every day together. Their relationship ended in September. She checked herself into a treatment program for trauma. I surrendered to him 100%. Gave him anything good I had left. What in the f is wrong with you? He used me in every way humanly possible for months and I let him. I feel absolutely numb and small and disgusting and ugly. It's getting weird. In mid-January 2021, more screenshots start proliferating online. This time, screenshots from ARMY's secondary Instagram account, including several photos and videos of women in bondage and him taking drugs. He was posting videos of him engaging in sexual things, him doing drugs. It was pretty wild. He really wasn't hiding what he was doing. It's just such a reflection of how above the law this man thinks he is, that he is not only in a car taking drugs and drinking while driving, but videotaping it and posting it. On the 25th of January, Paige Lorenz, a 24-year-old ex-girlfriend of Army's who reportedly dated him for four months in 2020, corroborated his ex's stories. I had just gone out of a two-year really long relationship and I moved to LA. I'd never been to LA before. That was um, my second time ever going. So my first impressions of him were extremely charming, just captivated the room. He was just full of life, loving, charismatic, Kind of the person that we see in the interviews and the person that we see on screen. He carried safety pins, shibari rope, knives, paddle. There's a lot of the BDSM tools. He would always travel with it um, wherever he went. And whenever he came over to my home in LA, he also always brought it over. I travel with rope. Oh yeah, do you want to see my... No, I don't travel with rope. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he repeatedly uh, talked about check. removing and eating one of her ribs. She also claims he carved his initial into her skin with a knife. Paige says she ended the relationship in December and that she's speaking out in the hopes of helping other women. Sure. Now, I'd like to start off with something I'm uh, sure you've heard before, but I just can't get over it. What a great name Army Hammer is. Yeah. No. No. no, it's a great name. I disagree. Hammer's family, peppered with Russian communists and American oil tycoons, the allegations are an unsurprising development to a long and sordid history with drugs, sex, dysfunction, and betrayal. The family's first brush with scandal goes way back to 1919, when Army's great-great-grandfather, Dr. Julius Hammer, gave the wife of a Russian diplomat an abortion. Julius was a Russian immigrant living in the Bronx and a central member of the Communist Party of the United States, according to biographer Edward J. Epstein, who published Dossier, The Secret History of Armand Hammer, in 1996. The woman, Marie Agonisov, died days later. Julius was convicted of first-degree manslaughter and sentenced to three and a half to 12 years in Sing Sing. When his son in 1898 was born, he named him Armand Hammer after the symbol of the Communist Party in Russia, the arm and the hammer. Well, look who is here. 
He happens to be president and CEO of Occidental Petroleum in Los Angeles. Maybe I should say he is also one of the wealthiest men in the world. Please welcome Dr. Harmon Hammond. With Julius in prison, his 22-year-old son, Army's namesake, abandoned a medical career to take over his father's other business, Allied Drug. According to Epstein, Vladimir Lenin sent a message to Joseph Stalin encouraging particular support for Armand, telling him, this is a small path to the American business world, and this path should be made use of in every way. After years of research, the CIA concluded that Armand Hammer was used to collect information for the KGB. He was an agent of the Soviet Union. Armand moved to the Soviet Union in 1921 for about a decade to fortify family connections. While there, he married a Russian singer named Olga, and together they had a son named Julian, Army's grandfather. By the 1950s, Armand had divorced Olga as well as a second wife, Angela, before moving to Los Angeles, where he married a wealthy woman named Frances Barrett Tolman in 1956 and invested her money in the then-failing Occidental Petroleum, driving the company to incredible success. Dr. Armand Hammer and his third wife, Frances, took a $100,000 gamble when they invested in Occidental Petroleum a small and struggling oil company. But, the, but you, were, you were named for your great-grandfather, who yep. was the billionaire owner of uh, Occidental Petroleum. Yes. Which sounds like, like the bad corporation in a Batman movie, by the way. <laughs> by the way, it's an oil corporation. It is a bad corporation. That's just the way it goes. So, Armand Hammer but, considered but, his relations with women as a means of getting something. They served a purpose to him. He married Frances for her money. She gave him the money that allowed him to go into the oil business in a big way. Armand tried to distance himself from his Soviet connections, reimagining himself as a self-made industrialist. He even hired a journalist to ghostwrite a memoir. He had a private Boeing 727, collected expensive artwork and piled around with Prince Charles and high-powered politicians. He was a close friend of Senator Al Gore Sr. and attended the inaugurations of FDR, Reagan, and George H.W. Bush, among other presidents. In 1996, six years after Armand died, Epstein's bombshell biography exposed the late Occidental Petroleum chairman for wide-ranging grifts, including laundering money, using artwork to fund Soviet espionage, bribing his way into the oil business — he always bugged his office and home — plus his cufflinks to record decades' worth of conversations, had a fixer, and was known to do business with a briefcase full. Most notoriously, he made an illegal contribution to the Nixon re-election campaign, which, according to the New York Times, in all likelihood went to help pay for the Watergate cover-up. Today, Hammer pleaded guilty of hiding contributions to the Nixon re-election campaign. Despite facing a felony charge for obstructing justice, a Washington lawyer helped him plead guilty to misdemeanor charges, and H.W. Bush later pardoned him. There was an even darker side to Armand that was first revealed by one of his wives, Angela. Alma's wife, Angela, in her divorce testimony, she said that he willfully, maliciously, and deliberately pursued a course of conduct, employed techniques, tactics, and practices, calculated and designed to destroy her will. He threatened her with serious bodily violence and injury and to beat her brains out and one of his many mistresses, Martha Kaufman, who, according to Epstein, was forced to legally change her name when Armand's wife grew suspicious and had to change her appearance by wearing makeup, sunglasses, and wigs. So rather than give up his mistress, or rather than to leave his wife, he found a solution that was typical to the kinds of solutions he found. He had his mistress totally change her identity, change her hair, change her appearance, uh, wear a wig, and change her name from Martha Kaufman to Hillary Gibson. And then he told his wife he fired uh, Martha Kaufman. His wife said, oh, that's good. And he said, then there's a new woman who's much better, uh, Hillary Gibson, who looked, by the way, 10 years older because of the white wig. And she never, Francis, his wife never figured it out. No. The affair lasted over a decade, and she submitted to his sexual demands even when they were extremely humiliating. She had to submit to his sexual demands even when she considered them extremely humiliating. Something that's very degrading, very belittling. Unfortunately, not shocked. This is exactly the kind of things I experienced. Armand wanted to keep the empire he built in the family, but he didn't have many options. His son Julian was very bright, but was addled and unreliable, and Armand didn't seem to give much care to his only son. 
Army's aunt, Casey Hammer, believes her father, Julian, caused too much trouble. As she said, he could never get my grandfather's attention unless he resorted to really, really bad behavior. Such bad behavior went as far as murder. Army Hammer's great-grandfather, Julian, was arrested for manslaughter in 1955. His old friend Bruce came to LA to celebrate his birthday and reminded him that Julian owed him $400 and then Julian shot him two times. Julian was very jealous of Michael. That I saw. He was very jealous. He was very rough on Michael, very mean to Michael. I did see a pattern there that Julian, I think, was hard on his children because Armin was hard on Julian. He even had a paternity test taken in the hopes that it would show that his son Julian was not really his son. The only other option for Armand to keep his empire alive was Michael, Julius's son and Army's father. But just like his father, Michael was a troublemaker and, by multiple accounts, was not as bright and more interested in a playboy lifestyle than world domination. And in 1985, Michael started working for his grandfather at Occidental. Michael was the hammer heir, and Casey was just be nice and be pretty and we'll take care of you. In the same year, he met Drew Mobley on a plane and introduced her to his family. They got married that year and had Army the next. Michael technically worked for Occidental for like another year. And then he left Oxy. Michael didn't want to carry on the name for my grandfather at all. When Army was four, his great-grandfather Armand, estimated by Forbes to be worth around $180 million, died. Armand Hammer. Dr. Armand Hammer. Self-made millionaire Armand Hammer is dead. He died last night at the age of 92. However, at the will reading in a Los Angeles law office, his heirs learned he'd only left behind a piddly $40 million. My grandfather had $40 million of cash left. I got $250,000. My father got $500,000. Everything else got passed on to Michael. Army talked a lot about the evilness of the men in his family. Dad, his grandpa, his great-grandpa. But he didn't sound like he was ashamed of it. It's almost like it was a badge of honor. I would say, had I chosen to sort of follow the family's path and gone into business, it would have been much more advantageous. The actor Army Hammer has been confirmed as the suspect in an alleged sexual assault case by the Los Angeles Police Department. On September 22, Effie, who declines to share her last name citing concerns about harassment, launched the ongoing LAPD investigation, stating, On April 24th, 2017, Army Hammer, for over four hours in Los Angeles, during which he repeatedly slapped my head against a wall, bruising my face. He also committed other acts of violence against me, to which I did not consent. For example, he beat my feet with a crop, so they would hurt whatever step I took for the next week. During those four hours, I tried to get away, but he wouldn't let me. I thought that he was going to kill me. She added that the trauma she suffered after her relationship with Hammer ended was so intense that she considered taking her own life. Those in Army's camp mainly blame the scandal on the unverified gossip account at Deux Mois, which published and proliferated its Army claims to more than 750,000 users in January. It is also important to note that no one has actually accused Army of acting on his alleged cannibalistic fantasies, and he has never confirmed the texts are his own. But the impulses he purportedly described in messages to various women are unsettling at best. The assault allegation remains under investigation, and to date, no criminal charges have been filed. Over the years, Hollywood has proven to be an industry synonymous with everything dirty going back to 1921. The issue gained extensive media coverage in 2017 after the movie mogul faced accusations by over 80 women. This video shows in detail his attempts to abuse his power and silence these women and how he was eventually brought down.